Good evening, everybody. I have seven o'clock, so we're going to try to go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, let's see. Elder Snodgrass, sir, you give us a word of prayer. That's the first time I said it, isn't it? <laughs> At home, he's his boy.
another translation. And before that person reads, who's gonna read in another translation? But who's who gonna read it? You gonna read Elder Johnson? Who's gonna read it? Let me ask y'all something. How many have lost something before that you really that was important to you? All right. How about spiritually? Have you ever lost your passion? Or have you ever lost your energy? Have you ever lost your thirst? Amen. So the God can and He will restore physical things we've lost, but a lot of times spiritually, you can be dry and very barren spiritually, but God will replenish and restore. There is a time of complete restoration, and I'm going to talk about restoration a little bit, but this speaks to us spiritually and physically on what God wants to do. All right, Ellen Johnson, you'll read that one and read it loud for same text, different translation. Start it again. Who sent it? That time you had you, you, lost, you had that money in the bank and you lost it and you, you had plans for something and it didn't work out. Who allowed that to fall apart? Sometimes it wasn't the devil. Sometimes God allowed what felt like failure or what felt like great loss, but he did so for purpose. All right, go ahead. That 
was a great loss and it had a great purpose. But don't ever forget when you talk about Job and finish reading chapter 42. Because God didn't leave him in his state of lostness forever. He helped him and the people that were watching help him understand that all of it was working together for an end goal result. And at the end of it, you'll read the thing, he was blessed double than what he had before. And when God chooses you for what seems like a loss, he will never do that to mistreat you. He will take care of his own. Okay, questions, comments? All right. All right, I had that in the Cal, I ain't had a chance to edit it, but y'all know me, I'm gonna give you some scripture if you want it. But that's another scripture, somebody read that one. You have to read that part. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll tell you what, let's read that. I want you to see that one. Look in your Bibles in Mark. 10th chapter. Oh, Job was 42. It's the whole chapter 42, but specifically, I think it's 1 through 2. Oh, it's 10 through 12. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, Mark. Let's see, 10th chapter. Let's see. Yeah, let somebody go ahead and read it when you get it. Mark the 10th chapter, starting verse 29. I'm sorry, Aunt Ruby, if you go back and read verse 28 first. Start, yeah, start at 28.
can't give up or perceivably lose anything when you're doing work for God and not gain something and beyond what you need from him in this, this he said in this world now he also promised what was going to happen eternal now one word in there I can't let you get bypassed he also said you're going to get some persecution you will be mistreated. You will have some people who don't understand your journey or your, your peace that you've lost what other people consider valuable. But when you're connected with God, you know that your loss doesn't represent your final place. It's just a part of the journey to where I'm going. And even though I may have lost something, the provider is still with me. So my needs were taken care of, okay? Questions or comments? All right, so that text was a part of it. Uh, let's keep going. Somebody read that text, I mean that uh, slide. Again, that was a part of the calendar. Let's keep going. All right, that's his desire in the restoration process. And this kind of goes to what Ramesh was talking about. It's not just to give you a whole bunch of stuff. It's for us to now have the abilities and the sustenance and the resources to do his work and to become more like him. But in order to become like God, we got to do some change. Amen. Philippians, I'm going to read that text for me. Philippians, the second chapter. The New Testament, Philippians, the second chapter. It's impossible for us to do God things in self. We got to do some change. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Philippians, the second chapter. And yeah, let's start at verse 5. Let's just read verse 5. Alright. Um, somebody read King James, and I want her to read that again. This is how we typically hear King James, 6, 2 and 5. Alright, let this mind me and you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that will walk right now and read yours again. That's how we are to change ourselves, is in our thinking. Our thinking has to begin to mirror how Jesus thought. And if you read the rest of that, it will tell you he became obedient. There's that word again. He was obedient to the will of the Father, even though he had the ability to do his own thing. And his mind was, was connected with God enough to where he was able to receive direction from God on what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. That's our challenge and our task, is to begin to make our actions, our daily actions, our daily living, based on our relationship and the information we get from God. Not by what mama them did, what daddy said, what my grandmama and them had did. No, we're not to necessarily duplicate previous behaviors just because that's the way things were always done. Our challenge, even what you used to do, if, that, if you used to do something a certain way, don't mean you have to continue to do it a certain way. You're supposed to become more like him, and you ought to learn from some of the things you did before. All right, questions and comments? All right. Somebody read that one, please. Do what's needed to change. We gotta start putting in the time and work to do what's needed to change. So here's what we're gonna do tonight. If somebody come, Trey and Trevor, if you guys come and help me, this is what I want you to do. Yeah. There he is, right there. I, I want you to do that. You don't own, I don't want you to put your names on these. You, one of y'all, if somebody need a pen, there's a pen, so just give everybody some paper. This is what I want us to do. I want you to answer those questions as truthfully and sincerely as you can. I don't want you to put your name on it because this is what we're going to do. Once everybody has written something down, folded it up, and put it in that basket, and I'm going to hear tonight what we're going to do is I'm just going to randomly pick a few 
and we're going to discuss together ways that we can accomplish whatever that goal is. And then what I'm going to do also is take all of these and I'm going to pray over these for you guys and pray with you that whatever it is, the first one says write something you, not nobody else, you need to let go of or do differently in 2019 in order to be closer to God. That's the first thing. Second thing is what ways can you, not anybody else, what ways can you serve God outside of your comfort zone in 2019? Okay. The other part we'll discuss together as a class at the end. Remind me to, to discuss something with you all. I've been to put up on there, but I didn't have time. But I just want you to do those two things and then we're gonna discuss a few because one thing, I do have a few topics we're gonna study on as we get into the new year and I'm gonna talk about that at the end. But one thing we do have to do a better job of is bearing each other's burdens and supporting each other on our journey to becoming better. A lot of times in a church setting, not just here at this church or any particular church, but in a church setting, you can become so focused on trying to improve your own journey that you forget your brothers and sisters are going through stuff too. So if we can come in this setting and learn and grow together, read the scriptures and support each other together, we can get a lot further a lot quicker. Okay. Also, need when they finish, they're gonna fold them up, put them back in here. So once you've written this, that your answers down, if you will fold them up and you can put it down, you can sit it down for a second, so you can do it yourself if you want to, and then y'all come back up together. But let's let's try to accept the challenge of this and allow God to maybe give us a new way to do some of the things that's really gonna be needed for us to receive this restoration and to be a part of the restoration process that's going to be needed for us in, in this church and in our lives. All right, everybody got a piece of paper? Anybody need one? You got one, truck? All right, anybody need a paper or a pen? Everybody got that? All right. And once you're done, you just fold it up again. We don't have to put names or nothing on this, and, and this is not to, for us to share our personal business. We're just gonna, gonna go through a few of these together and, and see how we can use the Word of God and the things we have learned to start making some of these changes mentally so we can not let certain obstacles be a hindrance to us and then we're gonna set the stage for how we're gonna move forward in our studies in this new year. All right, about that. Once you're done, if you will just, I guess you just pass them towards the middle aisle. If you get one of them, you'll come and collect those in that basket and we will go from there. Towards the end, when God 
God knew he was going to restore him all the while, but he had to set the stage for each little part. And part of his challenge to Job was in the midst of his struggles, in the midst of everything he lost, can you be concerned about somebody else enough to pray for them? Even in their ignorance, even though they may not be deserving of that type of uh, mercy at that time, can you be God loving enough for somebody else to help them, to support them, even though there's no promise that you don't get anything? And when he passed that test, it set the stage for him to receive his restoration. Good point. I see a hand over here.
She's right. I was gonna say, and even once you finally do grow, you're gonna have moments where you have experiences that take you right back. It, it's, 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 you're gonna have valleys and you're gonna have mountaintops. But you gotta learn how to stay even keel and trust God in the highs and you trust Him in the lows. And when you experience a low, you just don't stay down as long anymore because you learn some things that now help you overcome. All right, anybody else? All right, so again, I'm gonna just read a few of these, and this is not, we're not gonna be judgmental on none of this stuff. We're gonna be helpful towards each other and try to help each other use the word of God and what we are learning and what we have learned to make some of these changes so that we all can be a part of the restoration process, okay? This one says, to the answer to number one, I need to approach my relationship differently or let it go so I can be led by God in them. So this person is saying maybe, I guess they have a relationship and they either need to approach their relationship differently or I guess if it's so much of an issue that it's a problem, they consider the fact they may even have to let it go so that they can be closer to God. How can somebody in that type of situation, ex first of all, how can you know the difference between a relationship that you can grow into a place that's helpful for you or a relationship that you just need to let go so that you can be closer to God? How can you, how can you know the difference? That's in your hand. Okay. So that's one way you can know that it. it gotcha. Okay. That's good. Okay. If you have, you want to say something? in the midst of, but there are moments 
where there needs to be a breaking of what was faulty in order for God to lay what's going to last. God has to be the God on that, not people or man. Yes, ma'am. Win them over. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And I could go into that. She's right. Yes, sir. Bits and pieces that I haven't seen the whole thing. <laughs> All right. And Fireproof is another one. When Ramesh and I are counseling couples, we have them watch that movie because it, it shows the different stages of a relationship, a broken relationship, and it shows the process of it being restored in a godly way and how what that looks like. And it requires obedience even when you don't feel like being obedient. It has to be a decision. I won't get into that. All right, good point. All right, let's get another one here. All right. This one says, again, to number one, uh, to study the word more. Something you need to let go of, do differently. To do differently in 2019 in order to grow. Study the word more. I like that it's short and to the point. You cannot grow if you don't study the word. Why? All right, tools to fight back. I like that. So I hear something else. Anybody? That's your guy. Very good. That's, that's the word I was looking for. The word is your food for your spirit. Just like somebody going to go eat some chicken after the night, and that's going to be for your physical body, you've got to have food for your spirit, and that's the word of God. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, what did he say? Man shall not live by bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That was his way of letting the devil know, just like I'm in need of physical food right now, my need for spiritual nourishment supersedes my physical needs. And when you recognize the word of God as that to you, you cannot live without it. You can't live without food. So you can't live without the Word of God. So that person to have their mind focused on studying the Word more is going to allow them to grow closer and closer to God. Because that's the thing about it. You can't eat what is of God and not be like God. You eat what's of Him, you're going to be automatically like Him. Good point. Anyone else? On that? Yes. specific as I can 
Um, the first part of this, I agree with Ramesha. If, if the first of all, all of it is by God's guidance. We're assuming you are praying, you're being meditative, and you're asking God. The Bible says in James, if you lack wisdom, ask and he'll give. So that's, that's one of the best places to, to start is by asking. But when you ask, pay attention to what your desire is and try to seek towards what you desire. The reason why in Psalm, he said he gives you the desires of your heart. A lot of times people think he gives you what you want. But what that really means is God gives you the desire to want. So whatever your desire is will tend to cause you to seek towards where that word is going to be most relevant to you. And the reason I would say start in that place more so than just in the beginning. Now some people, it may be in the beginning. But the reason I say that is because you're more likely to continue your search if your need is met at the point of the word. But if you just read and it just becomes historical knowledge, it's not likely that you'll continue to follow up. But if you're having, if you're hungry and you get something to eat, you're more likely to go back there when you get hungry again. Does that make sense? So definitely at whatever your need is, the beautiful thing about the Bible, it has an answer for every need. Another place that you should start if you don't have a clue is maybe where you heard God speak before. If you heard a sermon or you heard a word or heard a word of encouragement that really spoke to you, seek and follow up on that. Take a time to meditate and, and really do research on that because I can tell you, any word you get, there's more behind that message. You can always learn even more. And the same word can mean something completely different when you're seeking with a new heart. Okay. All right. Does that answer your question? All right. Anyone else? Any other questions or comments? All right. Good question. All right. Again, to the answer number one is help people, help people more outside of my family. I like that. Help people more outside of my family. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But what does that do? If you have a heart to help people outside of your family, how can that bring you closer to God? Right now, I'm here. I heard, heard on Ada first. Go ahead and talk first. Okay. All right. I like that. It's fine.
to prove your point. When you know what you know, there's a confidence there that you don't have to. You think about Jesus. He didn't just go around telling everybody who he was and, and making his presence known. But when the need arose, he was confident enough in who he was to speak to it and handle it in a way that kept him and that person connected to God. But you've got to know yourself, and most of all, you can't know yourself till you know your God. And when you know him, you now know what's needed and what you need to put your focus on. Okay? Any other questions or comments?
exactly what I was going to say. I was going to support what has been said and, and speak to the fact that we do agree that for the things, and I love the way Sister John said, the, the big and the small things, it becomes wisdom to know, to seek God for direction on those things. But I was going to try to support that person, like Homer Ramesh was saying, there are times when we as believers and people of God do have to put our faith in action to do certain things. And with the understanding that if they're in my doing, if I reach a place where I can't, God is still there to support. So it can also work in that as well. And James teaches us, she's right, faith without works is dead, meaning that at some point, and what you have learned in you seeking God first for the things in your life, now you do have moments and times where you do have to move in faith to do things for other people and do things in general in your life where God isn't just going to knock on your door for certain blessings. you got to go do some things. But in your doing, never think you become God. Think, know that he's there to support you and that he extends himself and empowers you to do the things that need to be done. So good point. Anyone else on that? And that's what we want to do. We want to help and support each other and, and try to, to uh, give credence to all the things that we desire and want to do to be closer to God. All right? I need to trust leadership more. That's important. That's a big, Sometimes it's tough to trust leadership. Why is it hard to trust leadership, first of all, sometimes? They're not always right. That's true. Why else? That's the main thing. We're so used to be a, you know, it's good to be an independent person and a responsible person. That is a very admirable and good thing to be in our personal lives. But it's difficult to be a good follower of Christ if you're an independent person. It's difficult. And a lot of times it becomes a hindrance to you because you really can't follow Christ in your independent mind. Okay? And she's right, we're so used to doing things ourselves that it's hard to trust another person. But if you can learn to trust the characteristics of God when you submit to a person, you are really submitting to God. And if they ain't a godly person, then I can't be helped to tell you, no, I, you gotta be cautious about that. But there are even moments where a person may not be a godly person, but you still gotta submit to their leadership. You don't have to submit to their order of why they do things, but you may have to submit to their leadership for their position. Good point. Good point. All right, anyone else? On that one. All right, I'll do maybe one. Oh, I'll do one more. Watch this be an in-depth one. I need to let go of working so hard and visit the sick more and read my Bible more. We've talked about reading the Bible more, so I need to let go of working so hard and visit the sick more. How do Say what? What'd you say? Man, I knew that was gonna be a good one and I really go on time to deal with. It. Let me do it the short part of that. How can working be a hindrance to you get closer to God? Can it? It absolutely can. How? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be so tired that even if you want to read that word, you can't even keep your eyes open long enough to read it. That's a good point. How else? You're right. Ma'am? He would just, <laughs> he'd be hypnotizing <laughs> No, he, he, he harps on that. You're right. Anyone else? That's it. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's the short answer. I got to get to that because we got to wrap this up. She's right. Assess what you're working for and make sure that at the end of it, the goal you are seeking connects you with God and not takes you away from Him. And if it connects you with God, then then pray for the, the uh, endurance and the grace to sustain it and then present that as a desire you want to overcome and God to help you. But if it's something outside of the will of God, you could be searching for something that's not really going to fulfill you anyway. And you do at some point have to decide which, that can be a form of idolatry, believe it or not. Jobs and things can be a form of idolatry that takes the place of what you should be seeking God for. So be cautious about that, okay? Any questions or comments on that Said that many times. She's right. The B 
busyness of life, she's right, is not an excuse not to uh, grow closer to God. We are to learn how to manage the affairs of our life under the umbrella of our relationship with God as believers. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else needs to fall in place. Okay. All right, good point. Anyone else on that? All right, before we close, the other part of the assignment I was going to do is to have you write down uh, a few topics or a few things you may want to study in this year. I do have a couple of people that have mentioned a few things to me, and, and one of the things we will study, and I actually started preparing it, uh, is one a study on depression. We're going to talk about that some because it has affected a lot of people in our community and it's something that is very prevalent. The enemy is creeping in on our minds in a way that's keeping us from being free. I'm going to teach on that a little bit. And I also have someone submit this to me as an option. And then I'm going to take a few more ideas for the close. It says, I'm interested in studying and dissecting the sermons in which we hear on Sunday. Oftentimes you mention a desire to go further on what you study, but time doesn't permit. So would you consider teaching on each point that you use in your sermons. So I don't know if that's something y'all interested in as well. Air writers, a lot of times, I can't really go into the detail that I'd like to, so this would provide me the setting to break down points a little bit. That's something I can consider if y'all want to do that. What are some other ideas, real quick, somebody just shout something out at me, I'm gonna write some notes here, that you would like to study on or some things we may can do in our class in 2019? Tithing. Oh, ooh, ooh, that's good. Anything else? What else? Anything else? That's it.
Honor. Any prayer requests, praise reports? Alberta Ward, absolutely. Sister Lucas, all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sign your dog, God.